Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us once again today for another episode of the Shangsheng School of Tibetan Medicine live webinar series. Today, we are going to discuss one of the most important teachings at the heart of the Buddhist Sakya tradition, known as the Shenpa Shidrao, parting from the four attachments. Now, this simple, these, Sorry, everybody, please, uh, please remember to mute your microphone. And then at the end, we'll unmute for some questions. That way we can have a clear connection with Rinpoche and uh, for our talk. Thank you so much, everybody. So parting from the four attachments, this is a simple and yet incredibly profound teaching of four verses, originally um, attributed as a direct transmission from the quintessential bodhisattva of wisdom, Manjushri, delivered about, I think about a thousand years ago to the founding master of the Sakya Buddhist lineage, uh, Sachin Kunga Ningpo. So this is a, a, an incredibly useful teaching, very simple to present, but can be expounded uh, probably without end. So today, uh, joining us to help uh, elucidate these teachings, we are absolutely honored to welcome our very special guest, His Eminence, Dagpo Shagdrung Rinpoche. Rinpoche, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, thank you. As always, our ongoing webinar host, Menpa Punsak Wangmo, uh, Tibetan medicine teacher and practitioner and visionary uh, of the Shangsheng Institute, uh, our director. Thank you so much, uh, Menpa Wangmola, for being with us today. My name is Adam Okerblom, uh, and I will be our moderator today. So parting from the four attachments, uh, Rinpoche, we're so happy to have you with us here. And um, really, I can say that I have not studied these teachings uh, uh, very, uh, very much. And so I'm really looking forward to uh, how you will present. So uh, uh, if you please, can you uh, get the ball rolling and just tell us a little bit about uh, these teachings? Uh -huh. So do I need to start now? <laughs> sure, yes. Now, right? I can start thank now, you right? So much, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> um, this teaching is basically given by Manjushri, you know, the uh, the God of Wisdom, uh, the God that uh, represents the wisdom, Manjushri, to Sajin Kunganimbo when he was very young. Um, and usually, uh, we say it was given to him in a dream. Or we can also say, you know, uh, when he had a very visionary experience that he uh, met Manjushri and the teaching was given to him uh, at the age of very, uh, when he was very young. So, um, and, 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 and there's a four main line, right? There's four main line, as we say, uh, you know, if you are attached to this life, you are not a dharma practitioner. And if you are attached to this world, then you don't have a renunciation mind. And if you have attached to self, then you don't have a, a mind of bodhicitta. And if you have, if you are attached to characteristic um, or, 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 or um, sort of like a shapes and characteristic, then you don't have a wisdom, you know, tawa or view, we, we can say view. <clears throat> but, um, you know, one very main, uh, main thing, you know, very, I think it's, it's very, very important for us to know that um, the, the understanding, right? Or understanding or approach we should um, uh, we should have or we should uh, develop in our mind regarding the teachings such like you know parting from four attachment and um, and a living a peaceful life it's very very different really we need to know that because, you know, just, just uh, because it is said in this philosophy, right? Like 
very famous given to you know some great master by Manjushri himself. We really uh, try, we have a habit of overusing it. For example, right, if I, if someone asked me, if someone asked me, you know, Rinpoche is attachment is a problem. I wouldn't say, you know, attachment is a problem, to be honest. Attachment is something we really need in our life. You know, there's a distinction that we have to make, you know, like attachment is, they say, if you have attachment and you have, if you have attachment to this life, you are not a Dharma practitioner, right? So, so yeah, so it is something that we have to get rid of, you know, uh, attached, being attached to this life is something that we have to get rid of if you want to be a genuine Dharma practitioner, right? So now when we think of Dharma practitioner, just because we were born in Buddhist family, just because we, my family said so, I was a Buddhist and I'm a Buddhist, uh, we feel like, okay, now uh, let's chant some mantra and let's, and let's see some guru and you know, receive some teaching. I'm a Buddhist as well. And doing some good deeds, you feel like, oh, I'm a Buddhist practitioner, you know. But to be honest, right, it's not like that. What, what makes you a Buddhist practitioner is much more than that. You know, just being born in Buddhist family doesn't really make you a Buddhist. Buddhist. So in that regard, right, in that regard, Attachment is not a problem, to be honest. We need to know that. To achieve enlightenment, all those disturbing emotions are actually not good, right? I wouldn't say disturbing. I think emotions, all sort of emotion you know, to achieve enlightenment is to get rid of all those worldly stuff that we have uh, put in our mind. You know, for example, fear, desire, uh, jealousy, anger, all those things are actually something that we must get rid of in order to achieve enlightenment, right? And for most of the people, enlightenment, they think like, oh, enlightenment is the ultimate happiness. You know, this is the like, greatest happiness that we have to achieve. No, it's not like that, trust me. It's totally against the, uh, the, the picture of happiness that we have in our head. We need to know that, right? So in order to achieve enlightenment, yeah, attachment is something very wrong, you know, something very, a big problem, you know, big obscuration. But to live a happy life, we need to know that attachment is not really a problem. So we really need to make a distinction. If you want to live a happy life, attachment is not a problem. It's my from, it is from my personal experience. I would say that, you know, I can guarantee I can say it with guarantee, you know, attachment is not a problem if you want to live a happy life, you know, but to achieve enlightenment, at, at, uh, yeah, to be a genuine Buddhist practitioner, attachment is something that we need to get rid of, right? So, so, but, so, so as long as it is attachment, does it mean that it's not a problem? No. So now when, like when attachment becomes a problem, when attachment get out of control, right? When attachment itself get out of control, when attachment, you cannot control the attachment. That's the time we can say attachment. That attachment is a problem. Out of control, as long as attachment, as long as anger, as long as hateful, you know, being hateful, it is under control, it is okay. This is something that we really need to know that, you know, because just because um, it is a attachment, just because it is a hate, just because it's a jealousy, right? Doesn't mean it is a problem. Just because you are suffering doesn't mean your life sucks. You know, this is a part of our life, but enlightenment is something very different. So don't get mixed up with, you know, your uh, ultimate happiness, right? ultimate happiness in this life and achieve, achieving enlightenment is something same. It's not some, it's very different. Just because it calls ultimate happiness, it doesn't have to be the happiness that you have pictured in our head, in your head. It's not like that. So it's very important. 
right? So I would say attachment is not a problem, but if it gets out of control, right? Instead of you controlling your attachment, if that attachment controls you, if that attachment hijack you, right? Then that attachment is a problem. So I think, you know, attachment is good, really. Desire is good because attachment, desire, especially those emotions, sometimes it is also referred to those emotions as an energy, you know, it serves as a fuel for everything we do in our life. We need to know that. It's like a fuel, you know, it's like a, a gasoline that um, push us. Yes. So attachment, those emotions are actually very important for us. Basically, you know, I would, with confidence, I can say that this whole world, our whole life is um, running on desire. If there is no desire, right, there's no drive. If there is no drive, right, trust me on this, our life will be very dull without desire, really. So, and also, for example, when we talk about fear, right, is also in, it's also an emotion that everybody uh, seems to dislike uh, the emotions like a fear. But I would say if we, if we, we wouldn't be alive if we don't have fear. We need to know that we would not be alive if we don't have a fear. All right. The reason why you, why you don't jump off a building is because there's a fear that saves you from jumping off the building, isn't it? So right, those emotions are actually very important in our life. The reason you didn't get your feet bitten off by a dog is because you, when you see that, you know, wrathful dog, you know, there's a fear inside which saves you, right? When you see a tiger, you just run away because why there's a fear. If you don't have a fear, just if you're just like a young kid, you know, like infant, you will go there and end up getting eaten by the tiger, right? So, so all those emotions, all of those, emo those emotions, right? So-called obstacle to enlightenment, right? Can help us play a very major positive role in our life. Yeah. So it is very important to have attachment. It is very important to have desire. It's very important to have fear. Why? Because we need a drive. We need a fuel to... Uh, run of a life yeah so and yeah and all those emotions if we know right if we know where and when we can use it it can be very helpful it can be a major positive force in our life for example right let's say hate maybe a lot of you guys might be thinking now that oh let's see he said that like all those emotions are actually very good, right? And how about hate? Right? Hate is something universally condemned deed, right? Like, oh, he's a very hateful person. You know, hate is something that we should never have in our mind. But, right, but it's not like this at all, in all the cases. For example, right, let's say hate, it also has an advantage. Let's say if you hate smoking, if you hate smoking or if you hate drinking, right? It will save your life and money because you hate smoking, because you hate gambling, because you hate drinking. That hate is actually saving your life and your money and your bank account, right? So, so what it is all about, it is all about balance, you know, those desire, um, um, attachment, hate, anger, yeah, those things, if it is under control or if it is in balance, right, those things is not a big problem. Those things actually can help you in our life. Yeah. So, and, and, and also, you know, anger is not a problem, really. To have anger in you is actually it's very normal, you know. If you never had anger in you, right? 
trust me, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, we must have anger. Yeah. And it is also nice to, you know, show some anger, you know, show some attitude to others to let know that, you know, you cannot disrespect me all the time. Right? To make people understand sometimes anger is also very useful, to be honest. I'm, I'm talking about living a happy life. You know, I'm talking about more relevant to this life. I'm not basically talking about, you know, the enlightenment, right? Yeah, so if you are too kind, if you are too patient, you know, it will be taken for uh, granted by your colleagues, by your spouse, you know, by your friends. If you are too kind, oh, just, it's, it's okay, so it's so kind, you know, it, 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 it would not, like, uh, hurt him, you know, he's a very kind person, just let, let's do it, right? Yeah, so sometimes even kind, being kind, sometimes even being very patient, this does not necessarily bring, you know, uh, happiness or make your life better. Even, you know, those positive emotions can, um, yeah, uh, disrupt your peace in your daily life. So we have to be, we, the, the point is that all those emotions has to be under control. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the main point. So please do not get confused by, oh, in this great text, attachment is like a villain, you know, so we should not get attached to anything in our life, right? Yeah, don't, don't think like that because it's a very different approach. As I say, please clarify to in achieve enlightenment. Yeah, it's something that you really need to get rid of, but in our daily life is something that we need to live with, you know? And it will help you if it, you keep it under control. If it is not, if it is something become something that becomes, you know, which controls you, then you are in trouble. So as long as you keep it in under control, it's very good. And and even right, even in Buddhist practice, attachment is something that cannot be avoided at the beginning. Because we as a human being, we need to practice Buddhism, but just because we are Buddhist doesn't mean that, okay, let's get rid of this attachment. It's not simple as that, you know. For example, understanding of um, emptiness, you know, the wisdom, right? Yeah, at the beginning, you know, at the very beginning level of Buddhist practice, that awaken, awa awakening wisdom has also, uh, has, has the elements of attachment as well, you know. But the way we pick the wisdom is a different aspect, you know, or that aspect is the wisdom, that that aspect is the attachment. We say that, but in reality, right, is basically the same element. It has the element of attachment, even the wisdom. So yeah, please uh, don't think, oh, if you, if you are a very short tempered person, you know, okay, I'm not a Buddhist practitioner. It's not like that. It's not possible, you know, because I'm saying it because it is not possible. Yeah. And these four lines, right? If you are attached to uh, 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 life, then you know. You know if you if you are attached to this life, then you are not a Buddhist practice. Oh, it's four line. Um, it seems that it says you know nothing is a problem but attachment. You know, it it seems like it says that nothing is a, a problem but attachment. But yeah, if if you are attached to awakening. It also a problem. Now there's a different because we also need to, you know, uh, understand. Let's say right because I think that's the reason why we you know always need a very you know a proper teacher who can uh, make um, uh, clarifications right. For now example right when we say if you are attached to this life, right, you are not a Buddhist practitioner. So spontaneously what we are thinking okay we should not get attached to this life it's very wrong if you want to be a buddhist practitioner so okay so we so basically we somehow think like it is okay to be attached to not being attached to this life so basically you are attached isn't it 
So this is this is something very wrong. You know, basically you are attached. You know, you are attached to something. You are attached to not attached, not being attached to this life. So we also need to be very careful when we uh, study or when we contemplate on those lines, right? Attached, if you are attached to this life, then you are not a Buddhist practitioner. Then you somehow, because it's very normal for us to think that, okay, attached to this thing is wrong, but being attached to, not being attached to this thing is right. But it's also wrong. Attachment is the problem, you know, if you want to achieve enlightenment. Now, let's see. So uh, being attached to parting from four attachment, this is also wrong. You know, being attached to parting from four attachment is also wrong. So basically, if you want to achieve enlightenment, right? Yeah, attachment is, doesn't matter, you know, if you attach, if you are emotionally attached to parting from four attachment is also wrong. We need to know that, right? Yeah, so... Because of because of this thing, you know. Yeah. So so that basically what is really happening in this time, really. Like most of so-called Buddhists aren't really practicing uh, genuine Buddhists, but practicing the idea of practicing. They think they are practicing, but they are not really practicing, you know, because there are so many. Uh, things to uh, clarify. Yeah. So after learning some Buddhism, you know, for example, you know, after learning some Buddhist, some Buddhism, you know, some Buddhists, they start to say things like, oh, world, this whole world is, is senseless. You know, like, let's say if some people stay in retreat for three, four years, and when they are, came out of retreat, you know, they will say, okay, this whole world is so senseless, you know, there's nothing to be attached to, everything is so empty. But, but same person, you know, but that same person can keep themselves calm when someone body shame them. Let's say you are fat, right? You just get so offended. But that same person says that whole, this whole world is senseless. It's senseless, this whole world has no essence. Everything is empty, but couldn't face the criticism of uh, being victim of body shaming, you know, something like that. So, so we, in order to, um, in order to understand these um, teachings, it's very important that you understand it clearly, or else you know you will just being end up practicing the idea of practicing instead of practicing the genuine you know, practice. Yeah, so, and one thing, you know, what is really happening is that we need to understand, we need to have a wisdom. And wisdom is like, or when we try to show a moon to a kid, right? And then we point our finger to moon. You know, if you have a wisdom, you know, wisdom is something like you're looking at the moon. But what really bas what, what basically happened to lots of people is that they just look at the finger, the pointing finger, and think that's the moon. You understand? So, yeah, if you have a wisdom, right, then you should look at the moon, you know, like that's what, that's the, that's the, uh, if that's, that's how a wisdom should function, you know, to see the real thing instead of, uh, being looking at something else, right? So that's what I'm saying. Many, uh, it happens a lot, you know, people just end up looking at the finger instead of looking at the moon when someone point the moon to you, right? So the wisdom, right? Wisdom is basically, we will talk about it uh, later about wisdom. But yeah, so yeah, this is the main thing. It's very important for us to understand that attachment is not a problem. But if you want to achieve enlightenment, yes, attachment is a problem. It's something that you cannot uh, go along with if you, uh, if, if you want to achieve enlightenment. You have to get rid of attachment. But 
if you want to live a happy life, attachment is important. Anger is important. You know, they, all of those things has a benefit. Yes. And and now these teachings, right? Basically, you can also say Buddha's teaching, right? Even though it was taught by uh, Manjushri, but you can also say, you know, Buddha's teaching. The purpose of Buddha's teaching, right, is to bring a uh, bring a clarity in our life. Now, that's the only purpose of Buddha's teaching. That's the only purpose of teaching of Buddha, you know, to bring a clarity in our life. And whenever we um, practice um, Buddhism, the main thing, you know, is that we should always have a purpose. We should always be clear. We should always be very clear of, you know, what are, what are the purpose of these practices? Because most of the people, you know, they study Buddhism because why I want to study. But what is the purpose of studying? You know, I want to listen to his teaching. Why? I just want to listen. What is the purpose of listening to his teaching? Right? So, for example, right, uh, there's a three step to learn Buddhism, which is to listen, contemplate, and meditate. Right? This is a three way, three step to learn Buddhism. But now, if we think, why we, what is the purpose of listening? Because we can contemplate, right? And what is the purpose of contemplating? Because we can meditate. We can find the real thing and can keep more time thinking about that, you know, uh, ultimate finding, which is called meditation, right? So what is the purpose of doing meditation? to create a habit, you know, to create a habit. That's why we meditate. And what is the purpose of doing meditation? To, a purpose of doing the meditation is to counter habit, those unhealthy habits. That's the purpose. And why we have to counter habit, all those uh, unhealthy habits, because to achieve enlightenment, after getting rid of all those habit and habitual patterns, that's how you achieve enlightenment, right? And what is the purpose of achieving enlightenment? To achieve enlightenment, the purpose is to help other sentient beings. Because we cannot really help all sentient beings if we don't have that ability to help all sentient beings. And only Buddha has that, edge. you know, uh, only Buddha has that. Um, ability to help so as a buddhist right we don't say okay buddha has the ability so let's pray to buddha and let him solve all the problem no we don't say that because buddha has the ability so i will become buddha right and to achieve to achieve in buddhahood the purpose is to help others so there's always a purpose if you are listening you need to have a purpose if you are contemplating, there has to be a purpose. You need to know that or else you will not move anywhere. But yeah, as, as I said before, but do we need to learn Buddhism to be happy? <laughs> not really. We really don't need to learn Buddhism to be happy. You know, Buddhism was, has only a history of 2,500 2, years. Yeah, and before 2,500 years, there's lots of happy people. Right. Yeah, and there are so many people that are not Buddhist but extraordinarily happy. So to to be to to learn Buddhism, you know, no, it doesn't mean that it will make you happy. To be happy, you really don't need to learn Buddhism. So that's why you don't learn this. Um, parting, the, um, parting from full attachment because you want to be happy. Most likely, right, if you follow all the steps which is taught in this teaching, trust me, it will flip your life. Instead of making you happy, right, you might find yourself in deep depression. Because it's, it is the, you know, because the ultimate thing or achievement is not exactly the thing that we 
have in our mind. Yeah. So, so when everything get revealed, right? Yeah, it will flip your life, and yeah, put you into dark, into depression. So, as as but even though I'm a monk and I've been studying Buddhism for many many years, and um, but I to be honest, right? I I really don't want to look so nice in front of you guys, but I would really uh, want to express my own feelings, right? To me, right, enlightenment seems to be very far, you know, already something that they say it's achievable, but to be, you know, to me, it's like I, something that, you know, I wish that's it. It doesn't get, you know, further than that, you know, something that I wish I had or I will have soon, but it is not really... Uh, I don't see it as something you know, achievable for me. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to generalize, but I'm saying from my own experience, right? It's very tough. Really, it's very tough. I can't even help myself most of the time. So how, uh, it, it, it would be so unrealistic to say, I'm going to have all sentient beings, right? So for me, right, I do learn this Buddhism so I can help them, but not help them to achieve enlightenment because it's something for me right it's something that unachievable that's my feeling really it's very very i'm not saying it's really unachievable but for my own experience it's so far away really yeah so and and most of the buddhist people really i'm um like um excluding those um uh, those um, people who study Buddhism, you know, um, for academic purpose, right? Most of the people, when they see me, they want, they're interested in Buddhism. The reason why they are interested in Buddhism is because, oh, I'm, I'm really unhappy, Ramesha. Can you help me how to be happy? Yeah. I, genuinely speaking, right, I have never I would say I would never met anyone who came to see me to, uh, in, in, uh, to seek uh, uh, enlightenment. No, trust me. I've never met even once. Most of those people uh, come and meet and talk because they want to be happier. They want to have a peaceful life. Yeah, they want to get rid of stress. And... The, the, the reason why they're um, why they are coming with this kind of you know the purposes is because that's the uh, like universal picture of Buddhists you know like oh, whenever you see some Buddhist teaching teachers and monks you know they seem to be very calm and very stress free some are even carefree you know some are even very cool and they think you know that it must be because of you know Buddhist teaching but it's not really like that you know I have some sometimes i would say you know i'm i also have you know lots of emotional problem depression sometimes i cannot sleep well those things happen right even though i'm being practicing buddhism even though i don't have that much stress in terms of you know daily work uh financial anything but still you know these things happen so yeah but so yeah so uh, so what is key to happiness? What is key to happiness? And when we, uh, when we seek something, right, we always want, to find, always want to find something very unique, very cool, uh, um, sort of like a very um, valuable, something like that, right? Like, oh, just... Uh, do a meditation on emptiness. It's gonna make your life much easier. You know, you will be you will feeling much happier. Yeah. Oh, just go and say stay retreat in these mountain. Yeah, your life's gonna be much better. You know, you will have lots of compassion. Uh, you will feel much better. No, it's not like that. Really, I I I stay in uh, mountain for the last sixteen years, and yeah, it doesn't really help much to be honest really but what is the key to happiness it's very simple 
really. I mean, there is a, a basic thing that you need to have in order to be happy. What is that? It's a healthy diet, you know, constant exercise and enough sleep. If you, if you really don't have these three things, right, there's no way you're going to be happy. Really, that's why I'm sometimes I'm say, you know, uh, how to be happy. What's, what's the key to be happy? I say, you know, try not to lose control of your emotion and have some common sense. Yeah. So when I say common sense, if you want to be happy, you know, you should, you must have a healthy diet, healthy exercise, and healthy sleep, enough sleep. That's the key. That's the basic thing that you must have before even asking about, before even seeking happiness, really. It's not about learning Buddhism and you know, trying to get rid of attachment. It's never like that. And the reason why I'm saying is that is because all of us, we are a living creature. You know, we are not dead yet. As, lo as, as long as we are living, living things require attention. Right? If you want to be happy, then your body and your mind requires attention. You have to take care of your body, right? Even a flower, if you want to have a beautiful flower grow in your garden, then you need so many things to be taken care of, you know, weather, water, all the stuff, right? So exactly like that, you know, if you want to live a healthy life, then we need to do all those basic things, you know, diet, exercise, and enough sleep, something like that. Right, and so um, so this is where we start. You know, the first part of um, a, a teaching. Um, I would try to speak. You know, like um, more general instead of you know speaking so uh, specifically. Right. So that's why now. In these four lines, right, there's many um, practices that we have to follow. But the first one is a discipline. Discipline, yeah. It doesn't matter if you want to be happy, if you want to uh, achieve enlightenment, it doesn't matter. If you want something in your life, what is the most important thing? It's a discipline. Yeah, if you want to have... Mm, very nice body, you need a discipline, you know, you cannot eat all those uh, hamburgers and those hot dogs and expect to have six packs, right? Yeah, Why, what you need, you need a discipline. Right? If you want to achieve enlightenment, then you need discipline. If you want to get rich, you need discipline, right? So, so what is discipline, right? It's, discipline is something that, mm, make things happen you know for me right that's what it for me when i talk about discipline you know that's what it means if you have if you discipline yourself then you are making things happen in your life if you are disciplining yourself to be a to have a healthy body a nice looking body a slim body right then you need to adopt a discipline now as long as you stick with the discipline you are making that nice body happen soon right so discipline is something that makes things happen in your life that's what dis discipline is right so and for that discipline right what is most what is most what is the base basic or fundamental thing that you need to develop is a self-respect if you want a discipline if you want to adopt a proper healthy discipline you know what you really need is a self-respect. The reason why I say the self-respect, right, is like it. The discipline will only function, you know, if you have a self-respect. Because let's say you are working in your office and boss told you, boss tell you, right? Okay, Adam, do this thing. Okay, in ten o'clock, I need the report. You will do, right? Because why? Your boss told you to do, right? And school your your teacher said, oh, this is your homework. Tomorrow, make sure I get it. You will do. Under 
all the conditions, right? Why? Because your teacher told you so, isn't it? But when you tell yourself, summer is coming soon and I'm going to have a summer body soon, you know, those six, uh, the six packs, all those body, right? You tell yourself summer is in, you know, after three months. So in these three months, I'm going to do all the, I'm going to hit gym, you know, I'll pump those uh, weight and I'm going to look myself, look really good. But what? Yeah, you do it for two days. And after that, I can't do it. Right? You listen to your boss. You listen to your teacher, but you don't listen to yourself. Why? Because you don't have enough self-respect for yourself. Really. Because discipline is not something you know like for a few days you know it has it, it, it you need a consistency in discipline and the person who's going to stick with you is only you not your boss is going to stick with you not your parents are going to stick with you not your teacher is going to stick with you for a long term you know the person that you're going to stick with you is your yourself oneself and discipline is something that you need as long as you're alive because you need to take care of yourself you need to pay attention on yourself right so if if you need to respect someone yeah it's yourself when you say to yourself you know i'm going to do that make sure you do that or else you know you will never be able to discipline yourself you will never have a proper ethic in your life and you know when you don't have a discipline right yeah, the chances are very low to achieve anything in your life because discipline is something that makes things happen in your life. For example, you know, if you look at those great billionaires in our world, right? They have, you know, the, I don't know, maybe, yes, maybe no, right? But the way they, uh, how to say, um, the way they divide their daily time you know like oh this this uh, I'm w i wake up in the you know, five o'clock blah 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 all those stuff it's all discipline you know really yeah so discipline is very very important you know in, in tibetan we call it chultim, right it's more like uh doing things in a proper way but yeah discipline is yeah good enough right so if you want to be disciplined right first of all Make sure, first of all, that make sure you have uh, self-respect. If you say it so, make sure you do it. Yeah. And, and also, you know, a daily routine. As I always believe that what really matters in our life are all the small things, really. All the small things that you do daily in your life. Because that's the small, you know, those small things you end up doing every day for the most part of your life and that is very important you know the things that you do every day even though it's very small right it's very important as much as it is small you know why because our habit is important the things that you repeatedly do repeatedly do every day it's gonna be the habit Yeah, it's going to be your habit. Then the habit will decide your life. People say, right, um, does, can you uh, decide your future? No. Usually we say no, right? But if we think properly, actually we do decide our future. Because what you choose to do is your choice. You decide. You make the decision, right? What you choose to do. What you want to do, you can decide. Is your choice. And what you decide to do every day is also your choice. And that what it makes a habit. And what is your habit is your future. That habit is going to decide your future, you know. So the discipline, right? The things that you do every day is very important, really. The daily routine is very important in your life, even though it, for us, you know, brushing teeth, eating, uh, talking, the way you sit, the way you talk, the way you react to your boss, to your colleagues, right? Those things, right, it's very important. Make sure you are aware of those things because it's going to be your habit and it's, that habit is going to decide your future. Yeah, so daily routine, 
and the value in your life. What do you value in your life? Yeah, what do you value in your life? It's also very important, you know? Where do you focus? What is your focus in your life? Because the quality of your focus is gonna decide the quality of your life, right? So for you example, you know, for some people, you know, uh, to become super rich is their value, you know, right? To look very pretty is, is a value, right? So yeah, if you look, if you, instead of, you know, uh, being successful or anything, if you just want to look pretty, right? If, and that, if that is your value, what really happened is that you will, you will attract people that only care about their looks, you understand? That is some sort of energy, you know, happening around. Like if you care about being rich, then you will attract people who only care about rich. If you want, you know, to be successful in your life in terms of financial or in terms of any, like, let's say practices, if, and if that's your focus, right? And if that's your value, then you will attract lots of people who want to be successful in terms of financial and in terms of practices, religious practices, right? So your daily routine, those small things, yeah, and your value, the thing that you value in your life is very important. And that's a, a discipline, you know? And, and if, you, if any one of us, if you really want to live a calm life, happy life, right? And inner qualities are something we should value the most because these are the things that are gonna make our life peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> basically, uh, Discipline means do something about it. If you want that, do something about it, right? I think, I think it is also a quote, like nothing's happened until someone moves or something moves, right? Yeah, you want to get rich. Oh, you know, our life is already like uh, predetermined. So why don't we just sleep, you know, and, and do let the, uh, the uh, fate do all the work. No. If you want to be rich, if you want to be happy, then you need to do something because nothing happens until something moves. So that's, that's why discipline is very important. You need to do something. You need to make things happen, right? Yeah. And, and for most of the people, you know, I think, yeah, and, and most of, for, for most of the people, um, and then, um, and it, most of the people, right? Uh, um, pe to be happy, right? It's something like achievement. They think like that, but it's very wrong uh, from my own experience, you know, to be a peaceful human being, to be a happy, to have a happy life, I think we should not target, you know, it as a goal. You know, we, sh we should not think it as a goal. I don't think it is a goal, really. This is a very basic fundamental needs, you know, as a human being. It's a very fundamental that you need every day. It's not that something that, oh, after 10 years of practice, after 10 years of time in the mountain, you know, I'll finally be a happy person. Oh, I don't really think so. That's not how it. Um, should be, you know, these are to be, to live what happens, your success, your, uh, uh, how to say, um, you know, that any great things that you're going to success in your life, right? It's very much depends on your daily happiness. Yeah. So please do not think a happy life as something that you achieve later in your life. It's a very basic fundamental needs as a human being. 
and 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 the life right our life begin outside of our comfort zone really um the reason why i say it is because we as a human being we live in we have a habit of living in like a zone you know like uh, how to say uh like a box you know like a circle we as a human being you know i think it's like biological or something i don't i'm not very sure about it but we as a human being you know we always like to live in in a small zone or circle and that zone and circle is called society and culture you know where everything is pretty much predetermined like oh if you do that it's good if you do that that's bad you know that's is success you know that is you know failure so everything is like predetermined right and for example you know oh if if you if your career is like an engineer right oh is a successful career is a good career but if you are just a teacher man you know it's like okay right so that's why lots of those parents they want to son to be a doctor and engineer but oh, as long as they say oh, i want to be a singer and all oh, that's not that's not a career i want to be a gamer oh that's not a career you know right so we have this kind of like as a human being we have this habitual pattern or you know habit of living in zone and circle and i always believe that uh, we need to think outside that circle you know and when i say outside of the circle i don't mean that oh just because you have a body nice body and you know uh you know how to dance you know you should go and do a strip dancing in you know, like strip become a stripper in club or something i'm not saying that you know i'm not trying to say that but um uh, what i really meant to think outside the circle right is like even though when you fail you know like we try to have a good career we try to do all those stuff you know to be successful in our life but if you see and you fail at some time you know because you need to fail to be successful to learn more you need to fail and if you are able to see that failure as a stepping stone to success right i think that's you know thinking out of box thinking thinking out of circle don't be a prison of someone's you know like don't be a prisoner of someone's expectation don't be a prisoner of someone's you know uh approval if you see those failure as a stepping stone to be successful in your life i think that's you know a uh, a way to uh, live out of box you know think out of box you know transform oneself transform your mentality transform your thinking transform your knowledge you know if you transform oneself in any condition that is something that we need to do really and and to do that to do that what we really need to do is to live a intentional life intentional life and 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 when i say intentional life right is something you know opposite of accidental life you know nothing's good comes out of accidental no one has ever climbed a mountain accidentally no right if we want to lead a happy life if we want to think out of circle right if we want to transform oneself we need to live a intentional life like we know what is happening we know and it may comes with a lot of challenges and yeah i'm going to make sure i face it and i transform myself and improve it right intentional life just don't expect things to happen in your life right try to live a intentional life that's it's very important so um and these are the thing you know that these are these are the thing that i would say you know it is very much depend it's it's very much based on you know discipline to uh and one of those very important discipline right is to make sure that you are prepared right for example i have seen a lot of people you know like in in those heat moment 
you know, like when you are emotionally very unstable, right? Instead of like uh, responding positively, we just react. Yeah, don't react without, you know, like don't react instantly, but respond positively. And and the and and in the way you respond positively to others is also depend on your knowledge. And that knowledge is also very much depend on your culture. And that knowledge is also very dependent on your uh, family, you know, the way they raise it. So it's so basically right, we just cannot do things that ask us to do by others and expect to live a happy life. No, I don't I don't think this is possible. We need to know what is really happening. Yeah, so basically um, in this competitive society, what we really need, or if you really want to uh, uh, lead a happy life, right, is a contentment, really. Contentment is a key to happiness. And the reason why I say is because the contentment solves a big problem. Because what we want is not something more. We need to know that what we want is everything. We want everything. And it is not possible to have everything in our life, right? So if you have a contentment, contentment doesn't mean that, okay, you know, oh, we should only have a little and be happy with it. No, we can have like millions of dollars and billions of dollars, right? And if you are happy with it, that's the contentment, right? So in this competitive society, I see people with a lot of stress. I see people with a lot of pressure, right? But if you have a sense of contentment and if you are happy with what you really have, yeah, it will do a good deal you know, in your life. Yeah, so basically we should do something about our life because we, um, there's a metaphor, you know, if you are thirsty, we should drink water instead of just looking at the bottle of water. It's not going to quench your thirst. If you really want to yeah, quench your thirst, we have to drink that water, right? Yeah, so this is something that we have to do, like uh, develop a, a, a um, discipline, you know, rule in your life. And now discipline is, discipline, right, is some, uh, like for, for in Buddhist, we say, you know, that we have like two more uh, like important component. One is like a part of a method and one is part of a wisdom, right? And discipline fall into the, you know, the first category, the method, but, and, and we also need to know that without the wisdom, discipline can also go wrong sometime. For example, you know, with, for example, let's say, you know, I want to be a lovable person, right? And to order to be a lovable person, I want to develop compassion in our life, in my heart, and I want to help others, you know, that's, so let's say you can do it, right? You, you do it, but without wisdom, you know, that, that love can also, without, wisdom without love, right, can be very destructive. We need to know that. Our wisdom without love can be very destructive. And without wisdom, the love can make you very vulnerable. Because, because of this, more, many people think, oh, if you want to be a good person, right? Um, if, if, you are, if you are a good person, uh, you cannot be happy. And if you are a bad person, right? Yeah, every, you know, you, you become very successful. It's very easy. It's not like that. It's not like that. We need to know that. Because the reason, the, the thing that we do, you know, you know, like for practices, you know, that we do in our life, let's say love, right? Compassion. If, we, if it is assisted by wisdom, right? The chances are so low to to have a bad life, you know, to suffer because you have a wisdom with it. The reason why you suffer is because you don't have a wisdom. For example, right, we have to suffer, right? Sometimes we have to suffer because we were bad, right? 
we have to suffer. We have to suffer not because you know we were bad. For example, I, I, I'm trying to say that we have to suffer not because we were bad, but because we didn't realize when and where to stop being good. This is also something that we really need to understand. Sometimes you know, just being good all the way is also not good. But we also need to know when we have to stop being good. This is also a part of it, that you need to know the you know the situation. Yeah. So, but um, the the thing that, <clears throat> as I say, um, there are so many things that we have to improve. Right? It's not easy, you know. To be honest, right? I, as I as I believe that it's not very easy to lead a very happy life. But there are so many small things that we need to fix, as I have mentioned above. You know, to have a discipline, you know, you need to know how to react, understand the situation, being more aware of, you know, situation, right? So, yeah, basically, anyway, and, and, and in this teaching, right, the one of the main thing is to understand that um, in Tibetan, we say, you know, as, as we say that our physical senses, you know, our physical senses, uh, I think a uh, proper term to say that is the sense, sense power, you know, like our eyes and our ear, you know, like we say that in, in, in our text, right? In the Buddhist text, we say that those senses power, right? Can only see, but they really cannot investigate. Physical senses can only see, but they cannot investigate, right? But our thought, it's opposite, you know, it can investigate, but they really cannot see. But the self-awareness, you know, self-awareness can do a both. It can see and it can investigate. So, right, so it's very important for us to have a self-awareness because we, not, we, we need something that can see and investigate at the same time. So in order to have a wisdom, you know, in order to have uh, understanding of reality, the basic thing is to have awareness, self-awareness. So you, so you know what is really happening. Yeah, so this is, you know, uh, the, um, something that we really need to uh, understand, you know, the wisdom part and discipline part. You know, and to have a wisdom, um, to have a, a discipline, the awareness is very, very important. Yeah, and if and if I talk about you know the attachment, you know, one thing that we really need to understand is that self attachment, you know, actually if it is out of control, it will cripple us. And what I have um, observed throughout my uh, life is that when you're very attached to oneself, right? It hinder us to learn, really. It really hinder us to learn. For example, when I want to learn, right? When I want to learn, but if you have that self-attachment so much, instead of, you know, instead of uh, wanting to learn, right? First thing that you care more is that I don't want to feel hurt. Because Buddhist things in, in, in Buddhist teaching, right? Those truths, you know, that those facts that it is told in Buddhist teaching can be very hurtful sometimes, you know, like everything is senseless, everything is permanent, you know, like there's no pretty, there's everything is, you know, like uh, emptiness. It's actually hurt a lot sometimes, you know. When, and when you want to learn, right? when you want to learn, but if you really are attached to yourself so much, you seek comfort. You seek comfort at the same time. Yeah, you seek comfort at the same time. Instead of you long, instead of you just jumping to learn something new, you, want, you don't want to be hurt. You want to, you want to feel comforted at the same time. You know when you were learning this is also a very big issue you know why because we learn 
our best when we are hurt. We learn best when we are hurt. So this is also, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it is, if it sounds very uh, relevant to you guys, but you know, because most of the people when these come to uh, seek advices, you know, from teachers, you know, they are very actually they are already very hurt, you know. They also, so when they ask questions, right, the first thing they really want uh, from the teacher is that comfort. They want to feel comfort. They want to feel safe around the teacher. But they, what they really need is to learn, isn't it? But because of the self-attachment, they care more about self-comfort than, the uh, than, than the learning itself. Yeah, so, so basically, these things, right, these things are more important for us to learn in order to live a happy life and to achieve enlightenment right it's totally a different it's totally a different uh, story and different area so in terms of if you guys have any questions in terms of achieve, achieving enlightenment and those uh the wisdom and those self uh, grasping i think we should just do it um by q and a i think we, there, that would be much better if you just do it right in a QA, Q and A, questions and answers, I can explain it to you much better. Just now, the whole thing I said is just based on you know, how to live a happy life. If you guys have any questions regarding you know, the real teaching, then I would it would be much easier for me to explain. Thank you. So I think we can spend some time doing Q and A. Thank you so much, Rinpoche. We really appreciate your words. And really, we want to thank you extra for, I know it's quite late in the evening over uh, in Thailand, very far uh, from our time zone. So thank you for staying up and sharing with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> so we are, as Rinpoche suggested, we are going to move to Q&A very soon. But first, uh, I would like to briefly hear from our webinar host, Menpa Punsak Wangmo, the director of the Shangsheng School of Tibetan Medicine. Um, because uh, many of the things Rinpoche just mentioned really go very directly hand in hand with uh, how we approach Tibetan medicine for health and daily life. So I'd like to ask uh, Menpa Wangmo La a little bit about that. Menpa Punsak Wangmola, thank you for hosting our webinar today. And are you here, uh, your connection clear? Yeah, this. Can you hear? Uh, I'm sorry, at least on my end, I lost you for a minute, but I have you back. Now. Yeah, because my connection is not good. So now I'm joining through my phone. Okay, yeah, that I think is so, better now. So hopefully that goes well. So, so yeah. yeah, you are right. I really want to say thank you, Rinpoche. It's such a wonderful, wonderful explanations. I... Myself, I received a couple of times this Shambashit. So it's really, each time when I listen, when I hear is amazing. I want to say thank you, Rinpoche. And then, uh, yes, Adam, what's, what you said, it's uh, the Tibetan medicine, when we looking the root cause of the disease, each disease, there could be one cause of the disease or one root of the disease. But all together, so the root of the 
the disease is the ignorance. So we say ignorance is that the determinant. So that the root of the disease. So, as Rinpoche mentioned, attachment is good. Hatred is good. Everything good if you able to manage to using well. So, for that reason, that all the you know, everything's good as long as you able to aware of. Don't go to beyond than what they sort of like the limited way. Attachment to yourself is good, important to achieve the life. But if you have too much, too selfish, then that also not good. So when we're looking sort of like the Tibetan medicine, we says, if you have too strong attachment to something, someone, somewhere, you will cause to get the issues of the lung, disturbance of the lung. Lung means is that the sort of like energy of the wind in our body. The number one symptom, you could not sleep well, as Rinpoche also mentioned that your energy is to get too distracted. And also you get a lot of nervousness. And then later that also can cause to the, like you're not able to sleep starting beginning of that. And then later could damage to the nerve systems, brains, digestive systems, Simple, the issue of the sleep could go to the all kinds of problems because of the you are not able to aware of attachment. Same like that way also, if you are not aware of the, your hatred, that also can cause to the angers, liver problems, blood system problems. And if you're not aware of the ignorance, then also could cause many other problems. So what I just I want to say, thank you Rinpoche's talk because we Tibetan medicine all the time we talk how important to be aware we the the ignorance, important to be aware of the three poisons. That could cause into the long-term problems, short-term problems, problems to your side, brings problems, sufferings to other side. So please continue to listen to Rinpoche's talk. And then Adam, please go back to Rinpoche. Thank you very much, Menpa Ponsak Wangmo. Yeah. We really always appreciate it. Thank you. But it's very helpful to have. Yeah, this. such a precious. Yeah. Absolutely. So now I think we can go, as Rinpoche suggested, to uh, have a little question and answer uh, with the audience. So, everybody, thank you so much for joining us, as always. And we always appreciate you keeping uh, muted during our presentation. And now is a good time for some questions. So if anybody wants to uh, raise their hand, then uh, have a specific question for Rinpoche. Uh, 